Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this episode of Dealing with Difficulty. As our children grow up, we don't realize that they go through changes at times and they go through phases. Many of us would probably become upset with these children to say they are naughty and they perhaps are you know, uh, unruly and so on without noticing that there is a certain time frame within which they are growing from being a child to an adult. And these teenage or adolescent years are not easy to deal with. The difficulty of having children in that time frame or that period of time is such that Allah Almighty wants us to be patient with them while teaching them that which is their duty the minute they are they achieve what we would know as bulur in the Arabic language or maturity, the age of maturity, when their duties unto Allah become proper duties. When a person is young, we teach them to pray. If they pray or they don't pray, it's not written for them or against them. As they grow older, it's getting them used to what is going to be the obligation the day you hit puberty. So it's my duty, it's my duty as a parent to guide them from an early age. Many of us forget to praise the children as they grow older. When they do something wrong, we're quick to yell at them. We're quick to say things to them. We're quick to correct them. Well, correcting them is a good thing, but yelling at them, sometimes we belittle them, which is wrong. Belittling a child is calling them bad names, uh, making them feel unwanted, making them feel useless, telling them you're useless, telling them you know nothing and you're never going to pass, cursing them. All these are prohibited in Islam. It is forbidden. This child is a gift. It's actually the ownership of Allah, not the ownership of you. But rather, Allah has given you tempor temporary custody or temporary ownership, not ultimate ownership. When a person passes away, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah. We've never said we belong to our fathers, we belong to our mothers, and we're going to return to our mothers. No. Although we say that's my child, Allah says, hang on, I've just given you this child for a short period of time to test you and to give you an opportunity to earn paradise by looking after the child before we take the child away. We may take the child away in infancy, in the teenage years or in adulthood before you or after you. It's up to Allah. So as the child grows older, learn to correct the child with respect and kindness. And then you find during the teenage years, they begin to navigate through a period that's not easy to go through. And during this time, it's very important for us to be very close to them and to offer them good words, to offer them appreciation. They are being built and molded. The best of words that you utter to your children or the children of others during this stage are those words that are filled with hope and giving them the strength and the feeling that I can achieve and I will achieve and I'm good enough and I am normal and I am okay, rather than making them feel so negative about everything that they won't achieve anything at all. They already have a negative mindset. I can't do this. I'm not able to do this. I'm useless. I can't. That's what they've been told all along. So to help them through these difficult days and difficult through this difficult phase, we should be role models to them and we should always reassure them. Some parents expect so much from their children that if they have lost a mark or two at school in the examinations, it's the end of the world. That is not acceptable. These examinations that you are belittling them about are not even connected to their ultimate success in the eyes of Allah. Perhaps Allah will grant them greater successes as a result of that little failure that they went through. I know of people who've dropped out of colleges and become some of the wealthiest people in the world. Subhanallah. Not to say that it's everything to be wealthy, but worldly success, part of the equation looks at your wealth. Whereas the success in the eyes of Allah looks at your connection with Him and whether you've reached out to the rest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes our children are lovely and so beautiful, waiting for us to encourage them to be even more beautiful and to be able to fulfill their duty as 
servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most amazing way. So go easy on the children. Don't be too hard on them. When we are very hard on children and we don't allow them to play as children, they grow up having lost out on a whole, on a whole section of their childhood. That would reflect later on in their lives in one way or another in most cases. So rather let them play, let them make their mistakes, correct them with happiness, you know, correct them in a beautiful way, uh, let them come through as they grow a little bit older. Like I said, encourage them, don't belittle them, offer them some respect, don't say cutting words because at that phase, many young men and women or boys and girls sometimes don't even like the way they look. And if you're going to pick on how you look and how you're this and that, you know, about their features and so on, they're helpless sometimes. And that belittlement is something you pay a price for. Firstly, it's sinful, so you get a sin for it. And secondly, you may lose the child. You may actually cause failure without realizing that it was you who did this. And this is why the empowerment of these children is very, very important. Sometimes we push religion to the degree that they begin to hate religion. And this is a difficulty we face. So, like I said, lead by example. Be exemplary. You fulfill your salah and so on. From a young age, we were supposed to let them see what we do. And from the age of seven, we actually begin to tell them, come, let's pray. And we should be smiling when we're praying and when we're worshipping Allah so that they know mom and dad are always happy when they pray. It's going to make me happy. When you're sad and you show a bad face and you're like, ah, oh, I've got to pray, the children won't even want to go there because for them, this is something really nasty. It's something that my mom and dad don't even like to do. But then we're telling them, you've got to pray, you've got to pray. Yet you, as a parent, don't even enjoy the prayer. So remember, the expressions on your face are important. We're going to bring them along. We're going to start telling them to do good things in a beautiful way. Uh, and then and we're going to guide them. And when they get a little bit older, if they do not fulfill their duty unto Allah, we can, we can actually reprimand them in a way that is most effective. So you don't just whip somebody. You don't beat them up. No, that will have a negative effect, especially in today's generation. It will actually turn them away completely. But if you cut down their hours on their games or you cut down the hours on the phone or you might want to restrict something that they're very, very close to their heart or in fact, rather than restrict, you award and reward them for the good that they do and they don't get that reward when they haven't done it, that is also a method. So you choose the most effective method which keeps the respect of the child intact. But they do know this is an important thing I need to get done. And then as they grow older, they go into these adolescent years in a beautiful way. They know I have my mom to talk to, my dad to talk to. No matter what I tell them, they're not going to yell at me. They're not going to, you know, say nasty things. Because many times when children want to confide, they don't confide in the parents. They feel my father's going to shout at me, my mother's going to get cross, and this will happen and that will happen without us realizing that they're actually confiding in someone else altogether who's probably giving them the wrong advice. So if you want your child to confide in you, you need to make sure you react in a positive way when they've told you something very negative. So if the child comes and says, you know, I broke this, I damaged this, I, I did this, I did that, negative things, we react in a positive way so that Allah Almighty will guide them and make them a means of our entry into paradise. One thing that many people don't realize is our children are a door to paradise. And if we are to serve the children in a way that Allah wants us to serve them and help them grow up into fine Muslim men and women, then Allah Almighty will indeed grant us Jannah as a result of this. And if we're not going to take that seriously, then we haven't understood the gift of children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children and grant goodness to all those who do have children and bless them all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.